on today's show. A Minnesota migration different from all the others. We follow lake buoys from the delivery truck to the water. Find out how all the markers get safely into our 10,000 lakes. Listen closely. Certain sounds mark the arrival of spring and a wild game breakfast recipe ready for any meal. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura, Millie, and I welcome you to today's episode. Our backdrop, the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. So beautiful. Up first, it's a story that most people don't understand or actually ever see. It's the tale of our lakeside buoys and how they end up in our lakes. And how they keep you safe. Lake Minnetonka's slow melt. A painful exercise in patience. We all wait to get back on the water. Joan Jones cannot wait another second. Spring is coming, so we gotta get ready. And basically this is the new buoys that we're replacing for all of them that were damaged last year or that just weren't uh, functioning correctly anymore. The buoys of summer, Lake Minnetonka's markers. Every March. It's fantastically fun. Tony Bruff's crew unloads and unwraps new buoys. Replacements to those that eventually wear out or end up in Bodine's version of a fist fight. <laughs> yes, it happens. We end up using this high diamond reflective tape. It works a lot better in fog. Hennepin County tasked Tony with caring for all of Minnetonka's 523 navigational markers, some of them as expensive as a thousand bucks a piece. The green ones get two. Give it some good pressure as you go. No bubbles, you gotta love it. Meanwhile, across town. Making cement. Thank you. Hennepin County workers help too. We're helping the lakes by providing a solid base for their navigational buoys on Lake Minnetonka. Our carpenters build the forms and then our participants makes the concrete and it usually takes a, about a morning to put that together and then just the curing time for the concrete. So as soon as they call ice out, we start putting buoys up. A call which always comes so soon. On a chilly spring morning, Minnetonka's migration of buoys begins. Put her down. Beautiful. This is my 23rd season. And I'm only the third buoy boy of Lake Minnetonka for Hennepin County. Our goal is to get them in within 17 days after ice out. And I've been able to successfully do that every year except for one, which was just one of those years where the wind just never stopped. All bundled up, Tony and his assistant lead with an old GPS in hand. There's definitely fancier things. I'm very comfortable with this and it's very accurate. The buoy barge follows. They drop in each bleach bottle buoy. And so I get old jugs and put some colors on them so they can see them a little better from a distance. 10 links of chain, some rope, and their specific depths. The barge you'll see later will come and pick up the jug and throw off the buoy. A process so simple. You guys rock that one. Boom, right on the spot. Workers will repeat it exactly 523 times over a five-day span. Eight. I use my depth gauge, knowledge of where things are, but the ultimate placement is by Nicole double-checking that we are at the correct depth. 
it's all because we care so much. <laughs> we just pick the lid up. Right now. Boom. Fantastic goal. It's such an eclectic lake. You have small boats, you got big boats, you got pontoons, you got float planes. Something definitely worth protecting and, and enjoying. Tony does his part marking each channel, each point, and danger area. The barge team earns paychecks too. Three days out of five, yep. 500 buoys, about 100, 100 a day. Slow and steady. They're heavy, you get a workout. My son asked me to go to the gym after work yesterday. I said, no, nah, I'm good, I got my workout here. So, now you know. The spring tale of the men and women hired. Hi, Mom. <laughs> to do the boys' job. Na 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 Batman. Na 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 Batman. <laughs> Slow and steady wins this race. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Star Bank, White Bear Lake Superstore, and by Your Boat Club. Spring has arrived in Minnesota. Seems everyone is excited me included. It's not just the signs of spring, but also the sounds too. My dad, Ron Shera, explains. April showers may bring May flowers. But nature has many other signs of spring in Minnesota to lift our weary winter hearts. Just listen. It's a musical song of spring peepers, a seldom seen frog in the state's eastern and northern counties. Spring peepers reside in wetlands and woodlands and live under vegetation. As their name indicates, the tiny frogs come out of hibernation and begin peeping, their welcome sign that spring has arrived. For most Minnesotans, the most common sign of spring are bird calls, tweets and twitters not heard in wintertime. while turkey gobblers begin to gobble as winter fades. Why? It's their spring mating call. In fact, almost all of our native birds have the urge to sing in spring as the prelude to mating, nesting, and raising young. Spring courting isn't easy, however. A male red-winged blackbird, for example, arrives and begins singing and flashing his bright red wing flaps for available females. Problem is, the females don't arrive in the cattails until weeks later. So, alas, the male red wing sings for naught for a while. Doesn't seem to shut him up, however. Okay, there are other signs of spring not so romantic. The first mosquito bite, for example. And ugh, spring means wood ticks out and about. On to happier thoughts, the spring waterfowl migration is always uplifting as we celebrate the return of ducks, geese, swans, and the like. A few flowers also tell us spring has come. White trillium appearing in our woods is a welcoming sight. Gosh, even dandelions look good in springtime for a while. Scientists insist that March 20th on the calendar is the official start of spring in Minnesota. It's the vernal equinox, which means the sun is getting stronger. 
March also is famous for huge snowfalls. Now, spring snow is not a good spring sign. In my mind, spring arrives when I hear those peepers. Still to come, hearts pump as we chase spring gobblers. But first, Laura's in the kitchen with a very unique recipe for your wild game. Closed captioning provided by Voyager Lodge and Houseboats. when we're getting wild in the kitchen. I'm here with Chef Jim Kimberg from Crave Restaurants. And Chef Jim, in my opinion, any time of day is a good time for breakfast. Breakfast for dinner works in my world for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> so what are we making today? Today we're actually doing blackened elk steak benedict. So. That sounds pretty good. It is very good. Are you ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. Okay. Let's do this. All right. All right, so for the first step, we gotta separate the egg whites from the egg yolks. Egg yolks, we're gonna put in the mixing bowl. That's gonna go into our hollandaise. I like how you're using your hands to do that. Best tools ever. I'm guessing this is not for me to drink. <laughs> well, you could drink it, but actually this is one of my first tricks for you. Add like two tablespoons of water into there, and that's gonna help kind of stabilize it, get it nice and fluffy. One more little splash, perfect. That's the splash. Yeah. So now we're ready to go over to the steam bath. We're gonna use a double boiler to kind of just whisk this up and get it fluffy and not make scrambled eggs. That's, that's, that's the, the trick. That's the goal, yep. So we have some water that is not boiling, <laughs> I've noticed. Right, so we wanna just kind of touch the bottom of that mixing bowl into that simmering water. When you start to see the bottom of the mixing bowl, that's what I'm looking for. That's when it tells you your eggs are starting to cook. It's getting to that temperature where the protein on the egg yolks is starting to set up. It almost looks like a batter. Exactly. All right. So I think we're ready for the next step, Laura. All right. So it's time for some butter. Yep. I'm going to continue to whisk if you want to slowly just add that. Slow and steady. Mmm. Butter smells delicious. Yes, it does. And how much butter are we adding? For four egg yolks, I'm going to go about a quarter of a pound, so a full stick of butter. All right. Mm -mm -mm. So now we just got to season it. And you got the lemon, so let's squeeze half a lemon into this. Uh, we've got a little hot sauce. About a teaspoon? Yeah, about a teaspoon. That seems about right. That looks good. And now just a little bit of salt. Salt and pepper. That's the hardest part of the dish. Easy enough. So we're going to set that aside. So I'm guessing it's time to poach the eggs. Yeah, let's poach the eggs. All right, but I heard that you have a tip for us using lemon <laughs> juice. <laughs> I do, I do. So we're going to add the other half of lemon to the water. It helps set up the egg white. Perfect poached egg, your, your yolk will be runny, but your egg white will be firm. That's a good tip. Slow and easy. Yeah. <laughs> and how long do the eggs cook in the water? They're gonna take about three minutes if you like that yolk nice and runny. And while our eggs are poaching, I noticed we're getting our cast iron skillet we ready. We are, you want a nice hot cast iron skillet for blackening that elk steak. Thinking we're doing it eggs benedict, you want it a little thinner, a little bit more tender. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna be blackening it. So I've got some blackened spices in there. And then follow me over to that cast iron. We're gonna drop it right in. So yeah, that's what you want is see that nice reaction of the smoke. And and how long do these cook on each side? We're gonna cook about a minute on the first side and we're gonna flip. Then we're gonna add a little more of that melted butter. And to finish it off, just a little bit more lemon juice right over the top. That's pretty much done right now. That's some serious sizzle right there, Jim. <laughs> that's some serious sizzle. It smells good. <laughs> it does smell really good. It smell those spices for sure. Delicious. All right, if you wanna put a poached egg on each one of those, Ever so gently. Time for yeah, our beautiful that, hollandaise. That hollandaise we put so much work into. If you want to ladle a nice full scoop over each egg, don't be shy. Voila. Look at you. Ooh. We got a little smoked paprika here. My favorite. Yeah, it ties in with that uh, blackening spice. And that is Love brunch that. for a king. I think it's time for some breakfast. Get in there and take a bite. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's all good. Nice. Delicious. <laughs> well, if you want to find this wildly delicious recipe, you can go to mnbound.com and have yourself some elk eggs benedict for breakfast, lunch, dinner, you name it. Good job. Thank you. You too. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Flow Docks and Lifts, Coors Light, 
and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Up next, Ron Shera heads back to his home state to chase a spring tradition. It's time to turkey hunt. If you're looking for proof that wild turkeys are booming in America, it may be here. This is Northwest Iowa. Iowa, so much corn, so few trees, and now so many wild turkeys. 30 years ago, fishing rivers was the thing. Turkey tracks in these parts were long gone. Then in the 1970s... We never believed they would uh, take on as uh, big a foothold as they did. They stocked them in the late 70s. We had our first season here in Northwest Iowa in 1985, and now we have unlimited turkey hunting. Iowa's big deer remain the most popular game animal, but today, turkey hunting ranks second in popularity. It's not uncommon to see uh, flocks of 30, 40 turkeys uh, up in this country. So I think with the development of more turkeys, you have uh, more of the, uh, the, the bow hunter that is involved in deer has picked up the turkeys as well. A veteran bow hunter, Jim McDonald, and I greeted an April morning with a plan. Jim hunkered in a blind while I tried to make myself almost invisible against a tree. Despite pleading hen chirps directed to the nearest gobbler, Iowa's turkeys didn't seem to be impressed. Well, maybe later. After a lunch break at the Inspiration B&B, Jim and I tried again. He waited by the decoy, I did the calling. Well, somebody at least came to the call. Oh yes, a robin came too. Oh well, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow came, but the turkeys didn't. Now we were down to our last afternoon. The plan this time was for me to sit closer to Jim's blind and carry a shotgun in case the turkeys didn't offer a bow shot. Then, like magic, a flock of birds appeared, led by a boss hen. And guess who followed? For what seemed like hours, the birds did everything but come within bow range of Jim's blind. Come on, you rascal, come on. For a second, the flock appeared to be leaving. I pleaded, come back. Surprisingly, they did. And it was now or never. Boy, he went down like a rock. He's a beauty, too. Ah, look at that. He's a beauty. He's about a Boy, two and a half, that three is year a dandy. old. Yeah. Huh? Look at that one. Those spurs. Wow. Whoo! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Ooh, he's got an Iowa beard on yes, him. Yes, he does. He's got some Iowa weight on him, too. <laughs> big deer, big turkeys, tall corn. That's Iowa. Jim McDonald, father of our own Minnesota Bound producer, Kelly Jo McDonald. That's right. We lost Jim in 2012. He was one of Iowa's most beloved fishing guides for 40 years. Incredible. Well, that does it for us. We hope to see you back here next week. In the meantime, Millie, what do we always say? 
Remember to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Dogs do. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.